Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, Force here. With Diablo 3's release just around the corner, today I will be providing you with a general overview of the game. In this video we will be looking at all of the basics and features that we can expect from Diablo 3 at launch. Diablo 3 is a hack and slash action RPG where you play as one of five characters, the Barbarian, Demon Hunter, Monk, Witch Doctor, or Wizard. The Barbarian is a melee master who commands the battlefield with brutal attacks and shouts that frighten opponents and bolster allies. He utilizes the Fury resource system which generates when dealing or receiving damage. Barbarian's primary attribute is Strength which increases their damage and armor. The Demon Hunter is the master of range weaponry, using traps and shadow magic to control and dispatch of the demons they stalk. It is the only class to use a split resource system, Hatred and Discipline. Hatred fuels most of the offensive abilities of the Demon Hunter, it is fast regenerating and has both spenders and generators. Discipline is more of a precious resource that regenerates slowly and is primarily used for defensive maneuvering. The Demon Hunter's main attribute is Dexterity, which increases their damage and percent chance to dodge. The Monk is a lightning-fast martial-based character who utilizes combos and mantras to assist himself and his allies. The Monk's resource system is Spirit, which is generated by using most of his primary attacks and spent on large devastating finishers. Just like the Demon Hunter, the Monk's main attribute is Dexterity, which increases his damage and percent chance to dodge. The Witch Doctor is a spiritual warrior who summons pets to do his bidding, while using destructive magic and curses and hexes to dispatch of his foes. His resource system is Mana, which although vast is very slowly regenerating, forcing Witch Doctors to be choosy with the abilities they use. The primary attribute for the Witch Doctor is Intelligence, which increases damage and resistances. The Wizard is the Master of Elements with large devastating area of effect attacks and protective spells. Her resource system is Arcane Power, which is very quickly regenerating but also very small in size, making the wizard very strong at front-loading damage and also able to sustain long fights as she will never run out of resource. The primary attribute for the wizard is Intelligence, which increases damage and resistances. Diablo 3 is played from an isometric point of view and utilizes the click-to-move control system, making it so that most of your actions are done with your mouse, with the exception of the four skills bound to your hotbar. Combat is very visceral and intense and has you constantly engaged with the non-stop clicking that you are forced to do. Also with the click to move system you are always forced to decide whether to move your character or actually attack with them, as without using controls WASD you are unable to do both at the same time. This forces you to stay on your toes and be more strategic when it comes to character placement in the midst of battle. The skill system in Diablo 3 varies greatly from what we saw in prior games. No longer do you select skill points or attributes for that matter. Skills are now unlocked while you level up your character. You can swap skills at any point, making it so that you're not forced into deciding on one specific type of build. Diablo 3 also introduces the skill rune system, which provides variations to your basic active skills. There are five skill runes available for each active skill for all characters, making for greater character diversity and choices of abilities. When fully unlocked, there are a total of six active skills and three passive skills that you can have for your character. These skills can be swapped at any time, allowing for greater customization and trial and error without the fear of penalty. The one exception to this is in the later difficulties where you are incentivized to stick with a certain build. Diablo 3 features four difficulty levels, sticking with the standard normal Nightmare and Hell seen in prior games and adding a fourth difficulty by the name of Inferno. Inferno will be the hardest challenge that any of the Heroes of Sanctuary have encountered. With a player cap of level 60, the first monsters you encounter in Inferno will be level 61, progressively getting higher as you move through the axe. Also in Inferno, the Nephilim Valor buff system is introduced. This incentivizes sticking with one build and tries to make it so that players are not constantly swapping their skills. It does this by granting an extra benefit to magic and gold find whenever you kill champion or rare monster packs while you are sticking with a certain build. This buff will be dropped whenever you happen to switch skills. This is also a stacking buff so it gets greater as you progress through the game and kill more and more enemies. There is going to be a cap on this but nevertheless it is a great incentive to stick with one build as you you play through the game. While there will undoubtedly be various monster types in Diablo 3, there are two basic categories that you can split demons in the game into. Your basic everyday run of the mill demon, and your much more difficult enhanced demon which includes champion and rare monster packs. 
Champion and rare monsters are enhanced with various abilities, making them much more difficult to kill and to escape. Increased health, increased damage, increased speed, increased rooting effects, increased abilities, all of these attributes are possible to be added to enhanced monsters, and they get ever more difficult as you progress through the game, with more and more enhancements being added to these champion packs. The real challenge while playing the game in the later difficulties will be how to survive the champion and elite packs that you come up against. Items and gear in Diablo 3 work just as they did in prior games with a randomized chance of dropping off of any monster. As you progress through the game's difficulties and acts you have a higher percentage chance to get better items, but it is still completely random. With that as well, the attributes on the items and weapons are also randomized. You are never going to be certain what you will get from any particular piece of gear. There are 16 visual distinct types of gears that you get while you progress through the game. These are not individual pieces of gear, but just visual styles as you progress from the first difficulty through the axe all the way until the last difficulty. In addition to that, there will also be sets and legendary items in the game, which do have their own distinct looks. Gear in the game is not character bound and can be swapped to any of your characters or traded with any of your friends at will. Just because you have equipped a certain piece of gear does not mean it is permanently yours. This also allows you to sell these items on the auction house. There are two styles of auction house in Diablo 3, the standard in-game currency gold auction house and the real money auction house. The real money auction house you have access to will use your local currency and features a battle.net balance. With the auction house, there is a transaction and a withdrawal fee, so if you are selling items on the game and trying to pull it into your PayPal account, you are going to be incurring fees. Diablo 3 also features in-game NPCs to assist you in dispatching of foes and creating items. This is done through the follower and the artisan system. The followers are NPCs that you will discover while playing the game and will follow your character while playing in a single player mode. These include the Enchantress, Scoundrel, and Templar. The Templar is the first follower you unlock in the first act of the game. Artisans are also discovered while playing the game and include the blacksmith and the jeweler. You do discover the blacksmith first which allows you to create items and weapons. The jeweler is discovered later which will allow you to create gems. Diablo 3 will also be featuring a PvP arena system although this will not be available at launch and will be coming later down the road. Arena PvP will be done in a team deathmatch style currently set to 4v4, which includes respawns and a kill count. Once a set amount of time has been reached or a total number of kills, one team is the victor. This is meant to be a much more casual system, there will not be global leaderboards, a number one PvP team or anything like that, it's more about obliterating your opponents and having them do the same to you. Alright my friends, so that does it for this video, I just wanted to cover all of the basics and features that will be in the game at release. Hopefully you found this informative, if you did be sure to like and favorite the video, also be sure to subscribe to my channel and check out the website forstrategygaming.com. Tune in in the future for more Diablo 3 content and coverage, thanks again for watching guys, keep watching and keep owning.